Ready? Hello, I'm Jeremiah. I'm a Canadian and an international volunteer through Cross Continental Solutions. I'm also a recent graduate of the Langara Human Kinetics Diploma Program. And I've been recently volunteering in the Occupational Therapy Department here at Kuroka District Hospital in Kenya. So in terms of reflections, I think that this international volunteering experience in Kenya has provided me with exactly what I hoped it would have. And that's a far better understanding of just how intertwined culture is with the practice of occupational therapy. I mean, to define occupational therapy very uh, loosely would be to integrate one within their environment. And that environment is heavily influenced through culture and sociocultural factors. Um, to explain this more clearly, uh, a lot of what's dependent in terms of treatment with occupational therapy is spoken of in terms of environmental inf uh, adaptations. And oftentimes, what I've experienced within this area of Kenya, uh, Kisi village, this is Kuroka more specifically, um, either the materials aren't available or the individual is not able to afford the adaptation. So what I've been able to witness in this time is just the undefeatable spirit of Kenyans. So uh, an example of this would be an individual unable to afford or attain the materials necessary for a uh, back brace or a um, postural correcting device for a chair. Although I think in Western Western parts of the world, you would see people maybe just give up or, or try to borrow the money. You see people here creating such adaptations through things as the use of a cutout water barrel, which is inspiring to say the least. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really the most that I've got out of this. And that's, that's like I said, the, the cultural influence uh, on, on occupational therapy. Right again. <laughs> So um, this is the occupational therapist at Kuroka District Hospital who I've been working with. Her name is Anne and she's going to give us a brief patient history on the individual before us. This is Valentine. Valentine is now four years old. Valentine is a case of uh, hydrocephaly. She suffered hydrocephaly while uh, two years of age and now operation was done. She has a shunt. But immediately after operation, all the milestones had delayed. Now she has really been on occupational therapy follow-ups and she has achieved, now she's able to walk with support. And now we're going to see Valentine walking with support. Now this is Valentine. Now this is Valentine walking with support. I think she's improving. She has, she has improved remarkably so improved. Yeah. Valentino. <laughs> Mom. Good. Good girl. Good. good. And she's responding. Mm -hmm. Good. 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 Mm -hmm. Just help her to walk. Oh, sure. Yeah. All right. It doesn't look like she needs any help. Just, just to like uh, stabilize. Yeah. Just to be closer in case she loses balance. I got it, Tina. I would really love to see that one. Yeah. <laughs> good. Good, 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 good. Very good. Good. So this is this is Shayla. Shayla is one year and seven months old. Shayla's chief complaint, or what we're trying to assist her with therapy, is uh, she's been diagnosed as having cerebral palsy. There's visually identifiable signs such as a small cranium, otherwise known as uh, microcephaly. Another chief complaint of this diagnosis is weakness along the right side of the body. If we can get Shayla to smile for us, well, I don't think that's going to happen today. We noticed that along the, it's evident in um, the nerve tracks along the whole right side of the body. Um, and what I mean by this is that there's um, noted laziness of the right eye. 
Sheila. Sheila. It's okay. So unfortunately, this is typical um, for children that we see. Both the um, cerebral policy and the protesting to treatment. <laughs> She's crying. So what we're trying to do here is just some passive exercises for the, sh we start at the shoulder joint and then we work our way down the right arm. It's okay. It's okay, Sheila. Unfortunately, this uh, mother and child travel from far away. So despite the child's verbally protesting, we have to continue with the exercises. It's not my favorite part of the job, honestly. We as humans are conditioned to react aversively to a baby crying. So you kind of have to subdue that instinct. Oh, my name is Dixon Omandi from Kisi, Kenya. I'm the cross-continental solutions local coordinator. Uh, I'm enjoying working with cross-continental solutions with its wonderful work doing around the world. So for a couple of weeks I've been working with Jeremiah Humphrey as a, a dedicated young man. Uh, I really appreciate his support in Kenya and so far uh, we have a long way to go, so we need to work hard as a team to make things happen.